The Mitsubishi A6M0, when it began production in 1939, was one of the best fighters on Earth. Designed by the talented Jiro Hirokoshi, the Zero was to meet the Imperial Japanese Navy's ambitious qualifications, at a time when Japan was seeking to have a navy that could rival Britain and America in the Pacific. The Zero's extreme range would allow Japanese aircraft carriers to both spot and attack enemy carriers and ships that did not possess the range to strike back. The Zero would extend the effective range of Japanese carriers in the Pacific, which would be tasked with attacking targets as far away as Hawaii, Darwin, Australia, and the Alaskan Aleutian Islands. Not only did the Zero have good range, a quality it would maintain competitively over enemy fighters throughout the war, it was also one of the war's most maneuverable fighters. In terms of speed and firepower, the Zero was impressive during the first two years of the war, until more competitive fighters entered American service in 1942 onwards. An aircraft with its excellent maneuverability and range could not be designed without severe drawbacks. For the Zero, this was armor. In the early years of the war, the Zero was fast, had excellent pilots, and large dominating formations could be assembled with good intelligence. This made for little need for good armor. However, in the later years of the war, when Zeros were either matched or outclassed in the skies, both in numbers and quality, they were considered fragile targets by the American pilots who had developed tactics to exploit the Zero's weaknesses and avoid its strengths, primarily using gun and run strategies or thatch weave maneuvers to avoid directly competing with the Zero's impressive turning capabilities. By 1944, Japan's Air Force and Navy was being ground down in a war of attrition. Pilots or aircraft could not be replaced. The aircraft industry did not have the resources to innovate or upgrade the Zero in any significant way. And when Zeros could mass together to face the enemy, they were routinely facing an enemy that greatly outnumbered them in the skies. When the United States started building Grumman Hellcats to counter the Zero in late 1942, it took them little over two years to surpass 12,000 in production. Japan was only able to produce under 11,000 Zeros during six years of production. The Japanese used the Zero effectively in Pearl Harbor and the Philippines, with numerical and technical superiority. However, by June of 1944, the Zero's dominance was a distant shadow, and the Imperial Japanese Navy would see its conventional effectiveness crushed at the Battle of the Philippine Sea. The Americans, with seven fleet carriers and eight light carriers, would face off against Japan's five fleet and four light carriers, with the resulting air battle being called the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot. Japan would lose approximately 600 aircraft during the battle, with the Americans losing 126. After the Battle of the Philippine Sea, many Zeros would be used in kamikaze attacks, as they were just capable of carrying a 500-pound bomb, and their maneuverability allowed them to penetrate American and British carrier defenses. Being relegated to the role of suicide bomber, which only mildly slowed the Allied advance to Japan, would be the final anticlimactic chapter for the once dominant Zero. I'm Johnny, thanks for watching this Zero Brief. If you want to add to or criticize anything I've said, feel free to do so in the comments section. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.